because this is where true Christianity is every spiritual thing you handle has its foundation in consecration authority manifestly is built on, on consecration the operation of the anointing manifestly is built on consecration there is nothing you command in this kingdom that does not have its root on the quality of your consecration and so this evening i will explain to you what sanctification is and i will also explain to you what consecration is and then how to engender consecration and then we will stop when we come back we will now enter the dynamics because if we enter the dynamics there will be power things will happen you can't say something because when you start teaching these things your your reality will start calling anything you represent as you start talking about it it start coming it will call forth because deep call it onto deep so let's look at sanctification as we move further the word sanctification is derived from the greek word hagiazo and that word simply means holy and holy means to be set apart to be set apart that means you are separated from and then you are separated onto it's a two-way kind of separation you can be separated from but not separated onto that's not hagiazo hagiazo means you are separated from that is the word that is from sin that is from death that is from the devil and then you are separated unto god now god is the one who engineers sanctification but when god is done with sanctification he now expects you to respond to sanctification your response to sanctification is what we call consecration and so it's just like god drawing a standard and asking you to follow that standard you know the temple moses built was already built in heaven but moses was commanded to replicate the pattern on earth so sanctification is god's idea of holiness consecration is your own idea of holiness the two must work together for you to be able to bet a spiritual thing are we together and so as i outline sanctification you will be putting it somewhere at the back of your mind that consecration means you will do what sanctification is sanctification is god making you holy consecration is you living holy if these two are not together you cannot see spiritual realities and i will show you four reasons why consecration is a must but let's begin with sanctification what is the scope of sanctification the scope of sanctification is captured in first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 it said and the very god of peace sanctify you wholly and i pray your whole spirit soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our lord jesus christ and so sanctification is a reality of separation that affects the spirit the soul and the body remember forgiveness and righteousness dealt principally with your spirit but now god has migrated beyond your spirit your soul is not righteous that's why you think iniquity your body is not righteous that's why you can join it to a harlot your spirit man is what is righteous now god wants to make your soul and your body the exact way your spirit is but unfortunately god does not have the right to do that without your cooperation when it has to do with your spirit your spirit came wholly from god and so god can decide to make your spirit whatever he wants but your soul and your body your will must be part must be part of it and so is god exercising his right as your author to make you holy consecration is you accepting what god has done and responding to it so sanctification and consecration affects spirit soul and body the sanctification of the spirit is what we call justification it means you have been separated unto god so much so that every right god has he puts on you it's just like acquitting you in righteousness god declares you right worthy to stand before him in justification god acquits you because now he has made you exactly like himself so cons holiness of the spirit from the realm of god it's what we call justification 
and the way god made your spirit holy is to create a circumference of preservation around your spirit ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 the bible said from the day you believed in jesus it said the holy ghost was used to protect your spirit as a seal that cannot be corrupt in ephesians 4 30 the same scripture was stated almost verbatim it said grieve not the holy spirit of god whereby you are sealed unto unto the day of your redemption and so the way god preserved the spirit was to circumference the spirit from every external influence of corruption so he made the spirit holy by setting the spirit apart are you following are you following so the setting apart of the spirit unto god is the first layer of sanctification but god did not stop there god still went a bit further because this economy begins with breaking let me take it one at a time there's so much flooding my spirit you know teaching sometimes can be a burden it's a burden because there's so much you want to say but you are limited wars wars are a limitation you know spiritual things flow as light that's why we need grace grace will help you to isolate them into cognitive words so that you can give it as capsules in chemistry we call it quantum the plural is quanta light is a packet it is it looks like it's flowing but it's a packet so please let me follow me and so god separates your spirit unto himself and that is the first layer of what sanctification and what that means is that the penalty of sin has been destroyed because the idea behind the sanctification of the spirit is to destroy the penalty of sin the idea behind the sanctification of the soul on the other hand is to destroy the power of sin so god has have sanctified your spirit god is now sanctifying your soul so the sanctification of the spirit is called justification but the sanctification of the soul is called transformation or renewal so the holy spirit and the word now is trying to separate your spirit unto god when he had to do with your spirit god had the liberty to do it at salvation but now that he has to do with your soul god is requiring your cooperation so he is still in the process of doing it that's why sometimes you do something the holy ghost comes to convict you and say you shouldn't do this this is wrong and if you heed to the voice of the holy spirit you now discover that the power not to do it again is released into your spirit and you stop doing that thing so that is god trying to sanctify your soul he has made your spirit holy and so your spirit is justified and the penalty of sin has been removed he is now trying to make your soul holy and that process is called renewal or transformation and that's what you find in romans chapter 12 from verse 2 where he said in verse 1 particularly that present yourself because god cannot do this thing without your cooperation and he said be it transformed by the renewing of your mind is the holy spirit that is renewing your mind now the sanctification of the soul is to break the power of sin the sanctification of the spirit is to destroy the penalty of sin but the penalty of sin can be destroyed but the power of sin will still be there this is why many persons receive forgiveness but they keep fornicating in fact when they want to appetize their soul they will come and weep and weep and weep and when that biochemical process is completed they tear they now wake up and say thank you father well it's not because of your tears that you were forgiven you were forgiven because of the finished works of christ and you have to stop that childish behavior and wake up cooperating with the holy spirit to receive the power over sin because when the sanctification of the soul is completed the power of sin will be completely broken and then you have what we call the sanctification of the body the sanctification of the body is what will happen at the rapture that is what we call transubstantiation or transfiguration this vile body will be destroyed however what the holy ghost is doing to the body now is to mortify it 
is to mortify it. So it begins to regulate your appetite. The Bible said in um, Romans chapter 8 verse 13, it said, that same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead, it said he mortifies the deeds of the flesh. And so all of that operation is God's attempt to sanctify your body. This is why Paul said, I pray that the God of peace will sanctify you wholly. Spirit, which is justification or breaking of the penalty of sin. Soul, which is transformation or renewal and then breaking of the power of sin. And then bodily, which is mortification of the flesh or taking away the presence of sin. The presence of sin will ultimately be taken away at rapture. And so, if you understand this is what God is doing, you will now reprogram yourself to cooperate with the Holy Spirit and to walk with the Holy Spirit. Many believers who don't understand sanctification, they never give the Holy Spirit a chance. And so, this is the error of many New Testament churches, especially those who call themselves grace churches. They stop their teaching on righteousness and they keep declaring the finished works of Christ. They don't know there is an ongoing work of the Holy Spirit. The ongoing work of the Holy Spirit must first of all be recognized, accepted and cooperated with so that that which happened in your spirit can also happen to your soul and also happen to your body. The Holy Spirit initiates it. The initiation part of the Holy Spirit is what we call sanctification. But you must have to cooperate with the Holy Spirit for it to be perfected. That is what is called consecration. And if a believer is not consecrated to God, sanctification process cannot be completed. And so that believer will be hedged into the power of sin and the presence of sin. The penalty of sin is destroyed, but the power of sin is ever present.